Organissima New York. Your exotic skin, hair and beauty source and your one-stop shop for all your natural and organic skin and hair care. Featuring authentic organic Moroccan oil and prickly pear seed oil and much more. Bringing you only the best straight from the source and proudly produced in the USA. So what are you waiting for? Shop today at www.arganissima.com. Arganissima, New York. Your beauty is our... Good to go. Well, folks, welcome back to the iHealth channel and iHealth radio with your host, Hurricane H. Uh, we're doing live Facebook right now. Usually it goes to our stream. And I have with me, of course, uh, Dr. Aim, as uh, you know, some of you have been waiting for. Uh, actually, we've been waiting for a couple of months now. We, we haven't had the pleasure of having you, uh, doctor, in, uh, since uh, last year, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. We kind of skipped the end of December, didn't we? I, I know. Well, it was literally the last Friday was New Year's Eve, I guess. It was New Year's Eve. Eve. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you, you, well, we'll problems. We can do it. Also, I think, you know, you have a nice background. So so we I know we have a change of scenery with you. And, and OK, well, let me tell you about my background, Hurricane, because Go for it. all that we've done is we've moved back to my little hometown and my little hometown just happens to be Sydney. And we just happened to pick up uh, uh, an apartment that has a little view of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. So this is me at home in my hometown. So we thought we may as well use it for you, Hurricane. Well, listen. That view, I mean, is to die for literally. <laughs> you know, that's like being across the street from I don't know the the Statue of Liberty and watching yeah, it yeah, uh, yeah. from your window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it is. is impressive. It is impressive. We it only see, we see it in movies, and you just kind of take take a peek from your window. You're having a, a sip of coffee. Yeah, so well, it's cool. real. It's it's real, and it's it's uh, it's just a little icon that reminds us of home. So this is home for us. Well, you know, I, you know, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to change. You know what? I'm jealous. Hold on, I'm gonna have to change my <laughs> background. <laughs> I'm gonna do something here. Hold on a second. We gotta do something. So, so this is actually my view right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> See how technology works. See, it doesn't work all the time, but when it does, sometimes it gives us a little bit of, of a good fun. Well, oh, listen, it, it was fun. It was fun. Well, first of all, thank you, doctor. As always, you know, I, it's a pleasure having you on the show, and. Um, you know, we've been, again, waiting for a minute and we do have questions that we have from last year that we haven't uh, literally gotten to. And so yeah. I ha we're going to start with those. But before all that, how's the new year with you? How's life? I mean, new, new digs, new everything. How's life in this hurricane? Story? Hurricane. The word is unbelievable. All right. Or incredible because it can go both ways. There are some unbelievably good things happening and there's some incredibly strange things happening that we've all got to get through. So Sydney's going through its wave of uh, COVID at the moment and uh, the numbers have been really high, but we've been coping. We've been getting through it pretty well. Uh, we haven't had much of a summer, but we're getting it now. Uh, but Hurricane, this is a time for us to actually recalibrate our values, to look at what's actually important in life. And for us, what's important in life is family. We came back to our hometown, Sydney, basically to be with both sets of our parents, with our children, so that we can get on with enjoying life together with family. Well, there's nothing better than that, right? <laughs> well, that's right. When it's going well, it's very, it's, very good. Well, well, the only thing is, I mean, this whole thing with the pandemic, I think uh, hopefully we're going to see the end of it. I mean, we had the same thing. I mean, we, last yeah. month. Yeah. We've, well, this month, actually, in the beginning of the month, I can tell you just in my environment, everybody that pretty much I spoke to somehow had the Omicron. So <laughs> it, it, it was yeah. just it was just that unbelievable. But, you know, we went through it. And luckily, this is not as dangerous or at least yeah. not as, as, right. as bad as the old uh, variants. And uh, so but hey, listen, we got to continue our, you know, uh, I guess, mission here and, and keep people pumped up and uh, getting all their uh, energy right. And that's it. That's the bottom line. Well, actually, that's, that's right, Hurricane. In fact, if anybody ever wonders, what should I do today? It's always the right thing to do the right thing. So whatever life calls upon you to do, you just do it. You just do that. That's what will give you the most satisfaction at the end of the day. When you go through a day and you go, I did what I believed I was supposed to do today. That's actually a really good feeling. 
I love that feeling actually. And you know what? Yeah. Everyone that's watching and listening, we should ask that question and we should feel that, you know, at every every day is a good day. You just have to to, to feel that yes. way and believe that way yes. and make it that way, no matter what, ups and downs. We just experienced te technical difficulties and, and 10 minutes before yes. we got on, I was juggling through my regular stream. And you know what? I just, you know, I never went straight to Facebook. I, I usually, you know, stream up to different, you know, at the same time. So I just went straight to the Facebook and it worked. You know, yes. people are like, well, how are you doing? Well, this, this is just because I'm going through Zoom and it's just, a, you know, to send it to RTP and whatever. Technical stuff, some people, you know, will be like, I don't care about that. I just want to watch. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. Well, listen, so 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 I know we have limited time and I we appreciate your time. So so I do have a question that that was actually sent uh, anonymously last last time and we just did not get to it because we had live callers. So yeah. I want to go with this particular question first. I mean, I have a whole set of them and I think we'll have plenty for the hour. And hopefully someone also can call in and uh, the number is, we have a new number, 732-332-8493. <laughs> so again, we, you know, you can call in and uh, ask your questions and, uh, you know, Dr. Haim will be glad, you know, to respond and answer to those questions. So first question, how to set, doctor, how to set boundaries with people in general and more yes. specifically, how to set boundaries with people who have hurt you in the past, like an ex, for yes. example, uh, the, the person says, I find myself forgiving him and talking to him and even spending time with him, even if I don't want to, but I don't feel strong enough, maybe to refuse and maybe that I enjoy the time that we spend together. How can I, can I avoid getting weak and set boundaries with people, period? Thank you. All right. So, Hurricane, that's a great question. The question has to do with boundaries. And I want to give a little history on the whole question of boundaries. You see, because 100 years ago, uh, it's, it's almost though we didn't have this question of boundaries. How do we keep boundaries to people? And it's only in the last 50 years that we've actually had to keep boundaries to people for a number of reasons. One of the reasons is that we are all a whole lot busier than we used to be. There are so many more things vying from our time. And so th the amount of idle time and boredom time that we have is very, very small. So what happens is we want to make sure that each minute that we have is spent really well. So that means saying no to some things and saying yes to other things. And you, we all get to choose what that is. But the caller's question is about boundaries to people who have hurt you in the past. And Hurricane, we can all say yes to that experience. Somebody has hurt us somewhere in the past and it's really difficult. And particularly when it's somebody close, like an ex or a family member. So that means you still have to interact with these people and you actually want to interact with these people as best that you can, but you don't want to be hurt again. And that's fair enough. So there's a few strategies. For some people, it's cutting off contact altogether. If it's a really, really toxic relationship for other people it's talking through the issues and coming to an understanding so that you can back get back into relationship but most of us have relationships that are not quite those extremes mm. so there's this idea of disengaged contact where you have limited amount of contact you have contact with area with the person where you know it's going to go well but when you start venturing into those areas where there's going to be conflict you disengage, you start shutting down, you sort of say, well, I don't really want to talk about that. No, I don't have time for that. Well, I'm not into that anymore. And you basically put on the boundaries to say, no, I'm not going to let you hurt me again, because that is the message that you want to get across to another person. Please do not hurt me again. So your responsibility in that is making sure that you don't give invitations to that person to actually hurt you. So that's where boundaries come in, right? And boundaries are encapsulated by one word, no. No, I can't make it. No, I've got something else on. No, I don't want to talk about that. No, you can't touch me. No, we're not going out to dinner. And the word no is actually very uncomfortable for any of us to use because it implies conflict. So I actually get people to practice saying no in front of the mirror in whatever way they feel comfortable with. No way, leave it till tomorrow, maybe not, not, nah, whatever suits you. However, no comes across, you can't avoid saying it. Sometimes you just have to say no. Wow. So I, I hope that gives some, some bit of insight there, Hurricane. 
It, well, it, well, it's amazing because I mean, <laughs> the the answer is so simple that it's always in front of us and we almost know it. But it's the the fact of really kind of considering it as an answer. I mean, again, yeah. to your point, no is is almost like you know hard to say. It's harsh, and you know it's difficult because you just don't want to hurt somebody else. Yeah. But but sometimes it depends of your own. You know, <laughs> I guess well, it, it does. It does. And let's go a little bit deeper because this is going to sound very strange, but the basis of a lot of hurt is actually love. And so I, I will go now to the caller's specific uh, situation where they're talking about an ex, right? This is somebody that you've loved, right? And the reason that things hurt is because there are some things that didn't work out. We wanted to get closer, but things got in the way. And so if we open up areas, we open up for hurt. But it also means that, you know what? We can't sleep together anymore. Doesn't matter how good it feels, right? That part is over because with the good feelings comes an opening for hurt, okay? And we human beings are always making the choice between pleasure right now and hurt in the future. And often we just want to feel good right now. And so we open ourselves up for a lot of hurt in the future. So all of us actually need to think about the future. What am I going to say to this person the next day, in a week? What's it going to look like in a month? And base your decision, even if it means going out with a bit of, going without a bit of pleasure now, on the future. Well, doctor, I mean, this is, a, I think, I mean, this particular person is, is the one that's asking the question. But I think this yeah. is something that, as you said, many if not a whole percentage of the world is experiencing it. and not, not yes. just in relationship. I mean, not just in personal relationship, it could be at work, it could be friends, it could That's be right. with colleagues, it could be, you know, uh, anywhere. I mean, uh, I had put a post on, on, on Facebook and, you know, it's just about, you know, uh, be nice to people and so on and so forth. But a yeah. lot of people, they say, I do a lot of good stuff to people. People hurt me or they don't do right yes. by me and stuff like that. And again, you know, for example, my, my response was like, you know what, they don't, they're not worth your time. You know, you don't have to even worry about them. You just ignore them, move on. Life goes on with them, yeah. or without them. And yeah. I think that's the thing is the fact that you're, you let go and you, yes. you have, you have to leave it behind and just whoever it is, you know, you have to make that stand and move on. It's not easy. Yes. Nothing is easy, but you know, no. go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're, quite, you're, uh, you're quite right. It is not easy, but all of life actually comes into two baskets, something that you can change and something that you can't change. Mm. And we spend a lot of time, me included, worrying about things that I can't change. And the thing is that you cannot change other people's attitudes towards you. But you can change what you do. And one of the things, let's say the work colleague situation, because we all love that feeling of being able to get together with people and to feel good and to feel that you can relax and just be yourself and be accepted to be yourself. But if other people can't accept that, that's when you're open to hurt. So the thing that you can do about that is to adjust your expectations. To expect things to go right is not always realistic. And uh, that's something I'm working in myself as well. But expectations, if you just bring your expectations down or just be realistic about who you will get on with and who you won't get on with, and don't expect everybody to like you because that is just an impossibility. Uh, and do what you can, but accept the rest. Well, doctor, I mean, I, I use that personally. I mean, I, 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 I have this saying, I love everyone, <laughs> you know, as much as they love me and more. <laughs> for what that's, it's great. Right. <laughs> that's, no, that's great. That's, that's so, great. So, and so I have no ill feeling for anyone, but at the same time, you know, I, you know, I mean, I always say this, I had almost the luxury of being an only kid, you know, I, I have no brothers or sisters. So I, I might be able to, to operate a little differently than most because, you know, I was able to live like my life, you know, pretty much alone. And for many days you were just, you talk to yourself, <laughs> you little, yeah, you, know, yeah. you have a yeah, lot yeah. of self-talk, but you know, yeah. you don't have any, so you compensate with friends and surroundings and, 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 and it's great. I love my friends. I love everyone. And people are watching right now listening, you know, I love them dearly and, you know, I enjoy every moment. And also I do make my selection correctly. So I just don't have to accept everyone in my life that is going to hurt or, you know, impact me personally wrong. I mean, I don't have room for that. I'm sorry. Time is valuable. Life is short. And, you know, I want to be with the people that really just have something in common with me, or at least we enjoy a good conversation and we move on. That's it. And it's yes. all for good. 
And so, but but for when it comes to love, and by the way, I have a few questions about love today, so I don't know why, but <laughs> the set of questions today were all about relationships, except one that I have that I'd like to actually cover because it's a it's the new year. But yeah, so that okay. yeah, so that that's re- well, it's not me, but it's just a question that I you know that comes you know all the time, yeah. and we hear yeah. about it, so I wanted to share with you. Yeah. But yeah, so again, my my piece is that we should always you know know that it's not going to be easy. We need to have the ability to to move away from anyone that is not going to be, you know, good in our life, good influence, uh, uh, whether it's at work, whatever the case may be. Sometimes even at work, you have these problems, you know, yes, and right. you got to you got to, you know, settle your, your accounts correctly. <laughs> that's it. You know, you don't have, you're, like I always said, you know, at, at work, sometimes I tell to, be, to, to, to my crew, um, you know, it's a pleasure to be liked but I'm not here to be liked. <laughs> it's, if yeah. it happens, it's a bonus, you know? Yeah. And, and that's really what it is. I mean, you do your best to be liked and to, to, to do the right thing by people and work with them. But really, that's not the purpose of going to work is really to, yeah. to do your business, right? To do the job. And so, but, yeah. but it's, it's not a bad deal to actually you know, earn some love and some, some good relationships and things like that. But that is not, you know, uh, a given. So, so I don't always expect it. And I make sure that people don't expect that it's going to be equally or, 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 or mutual, you know what I mean? And so, well, that's right. well yeah. again, it's all and, about setting expectations. Yeah. And, and we talked about the expectations and you brought in another insight because you as an only child, you were kind of happy with the people around. It's sort of like, oh, hey, there's another person I can interact with. Okay. But some people have had difficult relationship with siblings and they find that they carry that on into their work relationships or their personal relationships. So one thing that we sometimes do in psychiatry is to make sure that the past is not impinging on the present. So you sort of look at your relationships and say, hey, am I just rehashing something that happened with a brother um, a long time ago? And because it's a good idea to be clear of those, to have the relationships that you're having now and to have them honestly. Well, thank you, doctor. And, and you, you, you mentioned something very key that we live in the past sometimes. We're attached to the past and, or, yeah. or things that we cannot change. And a lot yeah. of people are fighting too much and so hard to like make changes that they can impact things in life that there's no control over, you know, yes. and, and they stress out about it. Like, you know, I always this, this very simple rule. If I can't do anything about it, I don't bug with it. I don't stress about it. You, it it's happening. What are you going to do? You move on run another way. And, again, and I give that advice to people all the time. I actually find nice quotes all the time. And I share them with people for the same purpose because I, I feel good about those. Keeps me positive and keeps my mental state right, rather well. Well, I mean, I mean, you'll be the judge of that. <laughs> but, but, but at the end of the day, it helps and it gives me a little bit in, in my own alley and it, it makes it very good. And you know what? I, I love to share that with people. I mean, that's yeah. what we're doing here. We want people to feel good and, and have a better life and you know, healthier definitely. living. So Most definitely. All right. So I think we're going to move to the next question. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is about the, uh, the, I guess the, oh, hold on. Why? Okay. No, I'm going to go to this one. Yeah. Why do people prefer to stay single and are afraid of commitments? Are there possible psychological reasons why couples don't make it through? Jenny from Louisiana. Okay. Uh, that's actually a very good question. Who, who is that from, from Louisiana? Jenny. Jenny from Jenny, I guess Louisiana. Jenny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, why are people shy of commitment mm-hmm. in relationships? Okay, so there are actually a few reasons, and this is a very difficult one, a hurricane, because I'm going to have to be talking about some generational differences, right? Because the whole way that we mate and date these days is very different to how it was done 50 or 60 years ago, right? And in all of human society, since civilization, we've actually put rituals around how you pick a mate, how you pick a partner. And in our society, up until only a few decades ago, uh, we had these rituals that were really quite formal and they were really quite binding and they, they went step by step towards a commitment And then something that we called a marriage was a very big public commitment. And it says, hey, everybody, we've decided that we're going to be together. And the whole point of all of that is that you have a whole village or a whole small town like Sydney there to help you. Because you know what? No relationship is easy. Now, the thing is about the last few decades is we've torn all those rituals down. 
We can uh, have uh, partnering on very different levels, everything from a committed relationship to a very casual relationship and everything in between. And because we don't have these rituals, you have two people going into a relationship, not quite knowing what they actually want or what's going to come of this relationship. And here's the difficult thing about humans. Humans can actually say, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a long-term relationship but we actually have to trust that that's the truth from that person at that time. We humans can lie. And unfortunately, a lot of people can say things like that to get their short-term needs met. So what happens then is there's always a payoff for commitment. So to commit to one person, you're saying no to everybody else. At least that's still kind of how it gets done. And to actually get over that threshold of commitment, uh, people usually need a public sort of a declaration to say, this is what I'm doing. I'm committing myself to this one person. But take that away. And there are a lot of people now in a limbo state of, should I commit, should I not commit? And it's not even that people don't want to commit because I got to tell you girls, guys do want to commit, right? But you know what? How can I be sure that I'm making the right choice? How can I make sure that there isn't somebody better out there for me? And the truth of the matter is, is you will never know. Nobody has ever known. You make a commitment and you stick with that commitment. Whereas in a society where you don't have to stick to that commitment, we're afraid of failure. We're afraid of making the wrong choice. And we want relationships to go well, but we're so afraid that this one won't. And here's the thing, if you do find somebody to commit to and both of you say, we want to make this commitment work, this relationship work, it can actually work. And commitment is very important. So Jenny, I'm, I'm sorry if I can't say specifically anything, but that's kind of the situation that we're in at the moment. No, thank you, doctor. And, and you know, there's, there's a few elements that we have to consider. You said, I mean, it's, it's generational stuff back in the days. And even, days, yeah. even even today, a lot of other countries may be still practical in, you know, That's right. where where there are those, you know, marriages and things that actually uh, you marry, it's true commitment. And there's less of, you know, ad hoc relationship, open relationship types. And yeah. so it's all through the marriage, you know, level. And therefore, it's, you know, you almost it's society and it's it's acknowledged by everybody. And it's a shame if you can divorce. And some people even frown on divorce in a lot of places. Yes. Uh, so, but in more more modern and Westerner, you know, uh, you know, countries, I mean, you know, like the U.S. and, and Australia and stuff, it becomes yeah. now more comfortable that you can live with someone, you can have a relationship, you don't need that, and you don't even have to tell anybody about it. <laughs> you know yes. what I mean? So yes. it changes stuff. There's also the the aspect of uh, high divorce now. People are also afraid. Yes. You know, like, why would I get into a relationship and, you know, it's going to wind up in divorce and, you know, uh, people are already have these predetermined conceptions that, you know, it's not going to work because it's not working for the others. And and you're right. Yes. There are people also like they they want to explore more to your point, like, well, I'm not sure if this is the right guy. This is the right gal. And we, we got to look for more <laughs> opportunities and see what's going on here. That, that yeah. makes it difficult. And, you know, it's it, I, I was. I don't know if we had this discussion before, but I love to cruise. And uh, so in cruises, they have this marriage, love marriage show. And 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 every cruise, ship, they have one. And, uh, yeah. and they usually have three couples they select from the audiences. One is the newest, you know, wedded, you know, yeah. uh, person, group. And then the other one is like someone in like in the 20, 30 years mark. And then the other one is the longest couple. Yeah. And 90% of the shows, the, the, long, the oldest couple wins. Yes. And, and and what they have in common is that they all kind of have the same rule. You know, we got married, we loved each other and, you know, good, bad, ugly, we made it through. It, it's not yeah. about easy way out. You just go through it, you know, that's right. and, and and that's, I think, the, the difference, because now it's a lot easier and it's, you know, people move on. Uh, back in the days, they really made it work. And, and, and some of these people, I mean, that I'm, I'm referring to, they were made 60 years, 55 years. I mean, isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? And, and they still have totally. it. And they actually yeah. have the, the, the questions right. <laughs> they get the answers right. <laughs> so when they ask the questions, they, they know. Like, even they, yeah. some, I mean, some some of them, they forget. I mean, obviously, it gets, you know, a little forgetful at a certain yeah. age. But, but, yeah. but for the most part, it's it's amazing. I mean, you crack up in those shows. I mean, I love them. I just yeah. walk and just sit there. My wife and I would just watch. We don't volunteer. but <laughs> 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 We don't want to volunteer just in case, but that, I think we're good. <laughs> but I think that's the issue. Yeah. 
Go yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Hurricane, I want to put a bit of science behind some of the things that you've been saying there, right? Yeah. Uh, because we have studies to show uh, the things that you've been saying are very real. For example, we used to be able to assume that people in more industrialized countries were happier than people in less developed countries. Now we're actually finding the studies telling us that uh, people in more uh, developed countries are more unhappy than people in developing countries. And one of the reasons is because it doesn't have much to do with economics or prosperity anymore. It has to do with family and relationships. And where the Western countries are a material rich and prosperity rich, they tend to be relationship poor and they tend to have higher divorce rates, not be involved with their families as much. And these are the things that quite possibly uh, lead to our happiness much more than our prosperity. So, so what you're saying is right, underdeveloped countries now are even happier than some developed countries, not, not, not totally. OK, and the other thing that you're saying is also right, that um, people are afraid of divorce, so they are not marrying in the first place. So there are fewer marriages happening in the first place because of this fear of divorce. And look, Hurricane, generations ago, there were loveless marriages. There were people, particularly women, that were trapped in marriages, and it was horrible. So divorce has obviously opened the door for people to be able to do that. And so it's um, it's a married psychiatrist by the name of Eli Finkel that, that's written a book basically saying that we're in a situation now that people want it all or they want nothing. So that people who are in marriages, they've got good marriages. They work on it. They make sure that they fulfill each other's needs and get to that place where, yay, it's working. You know what? Because if we don't have that, we may as well break up. It may as well be nothing. So it's got to be all or nothing with me. More people are thinking that way. And it's not too bad because I'm on the side of people putting their all into a relationship and saying, hey, let's work on this. You and me, let's find together happy. Well, listen, I, I agree with you. I've been there 20 years and I can tell you uh, it, it's it's not easy. You got to make it work. And, you know, it's not always about who's right. I mean, although happy wife, happy life, you know, <laughs> you know, we applied that rule. But but the fact is, really, I mean, it's I'm, I'm just being funny about it. But the fact is, really, yeah, yeah. everyone has to give in, you know, sometime and you don't have to always have your way. And that's actually what makes it work. Plus, you have to yeah, spice yeah, it yeah. up. You know, you yeah. can't always just work, work, work and get stressed and stuff. You have to enjoy it. You have to do certain things, find common elements and those things work. And 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 sometimes it's difficult. You know, again, it's, uh, you know, you got to find that mate, as, as we say, as we would say, the right one. And, and that's not always, you know, easy, but you find that person eventually. And when you do, you you hang on to them. But you're right. There's the other case where there were a lot of you know folks that they don't care they yeah. and, and and it's a lot easier these days i mean you know you you pay yours i pay mine we live together we're all like roommates you know <laughs> with yeah. the romance right yeah. and so that that's how it plays and you know some people actually they don't even go through the legal route they just go through yeah. like common marriage or one of the community one of those things and and they just live forever together and they yeah. make it work and then you have yeah. you know the, the people that just like oh it's not working i'm out at the first instance of you know difficulty yes. they walk out and, yes. you know, and that's the other thing. And it's sad yes. because sometimes you have kids in between. That's right. So, so you brought up the idea of how do I find the right mate? Mm. And so I want to go into the brain with this because it's a very difficult question. And we have been looking at personality types, astrological types, and how do we make sure that people are compatible, this word compatible. And Hurricane, having done a lot of relationship therapy with people who have mental illness, I can tell you that there are some people who on paper are not compatible. They make their marriage work. And I have seen some people where on paper, they should do really well. They bombed out. Okay. So what is it? So when we go into the brain, what happens is when you make eye contact with somebody and when you get close to somebody with physical touch and listening to them, you engage what's called the social brain. Now they are parts of the brain that have to do with feelings, empathy, compassion, and even feeling each other's pain. So we're talking about brain areas like the amygdala, my favorite, the anterior cingulate gyrus, as well as the orbitofrontal cortex, where we make decisions. 
and, uh, and also in the prefrontal cortex where we get to think about our emotions. But here's actually what I believe is the secret to finding the right person. Be the right person yourself. If you are the person that you believe that you want to marry, your social brain will be activated so that a part of your brain called uh, the reticular activating system will look out for that person to say, this is what I want in a partner. And if you are the person that you want in a partner, then it may take some time and you may need to kiss some toads before you get your hands in print, but your social brain will say, you know what? That's the brain I've been looking for. That's the one where I see myself in and I can empathize with and I can share who I am. It's still going to be difficult. There are still going to be arguments, okay? Uh, expectations of young people are that relationships just happen. They don't. They're a lot of work, a lot of work. But it's worthwhile work, Hurricane, because love is at the end of the rainbow. Well, it is. And you know, it's funny because there's another thing that, that people sometimes, uh, where they, they, I think they fail, is that they debate too much. I mean, we disagree on, a, on, a, on an element and we go at it, you know, no, it's my, it's your, that one, but, and, and eventually you don't, you don't walk away from that discussion and it escalates and, you know, instead of de-escalating, you're just escalating things and it yeah. doesn't, and it doesn't work. And I think that's the other thing. Sometimes it's just like, you know, okay, you win. I move on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, those are concepts that work and they make it, you know, uh, I mean, obviously I'm not saying you got to run away from uh, a confrontation no, 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 or whatever, no, no, no. but, but, but really the idea is that, you know, is it worth it, you know, to, to go crazy? Yeah. Okay. You know, you, you got this and then that's it. I mean, I don't have to really yeah. go back and forth. Sometimes people fight because of economy stuff, right. You know, like really money and, and, and expenses and stress. Sometimes they fight over kids. It gets a little yeah. convoluted with a lot of different, sometimes yeah. it's the family members, whatever. I mean, in yeah. some cultures, family actually is part of your marriage. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm going to give three tips. Go for on it. Arguing. Okay. Number one is couples must never argue over the question that the internet could answer. Right. If, if you're arguing as to which is the short, shortest way or quickest way to get somewhere, just find the answer on the internet. Don't argue about that. Number two, you never want to win an argument because if you win an argument, your partner has lost, right? And you actually don't want that. It may feel good for a couple of seconds, but then you go, oh my God, they're not feeling good. Number three and Hurricane, I've got to tell you, every relationship could be transformed if we were all able to do this one thing. Listen. Just listen and understand. If somebody is arguing with you, it's because they're trying to get something across to you that you haven't heard yet, that you haven't listened to, that you haven't understood. Because when you're arguing with them, you're actually trying to get a point of view across that they're not getting, okay? So sometimes it just needs the time and the space to sit down and say, I'm here. What are you trying to tell me? Right? Because once a person just listens then the other person knows that they're on your side and that's a wonderful feeling, but we got to get through a lot of layers to get there. Hurricane. Well, listen, I mean, the three, three pointers that you just gave us, I think everybody can do it. I mean, it's not yeah. difficult. It's just the, the willingness. Are you willing to go there? I mean, are you willing to you listen? I mean, to your point, I mean, now with Google, you can answer any question. You don't even ask, ask Siri, ask Alexa. They will give you the answer. <laughs> 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 you know? I mean, yeah. believe me, I use, I use that. I don't even argue anymore. I don't, not argue, but I don't even, when I think of something, I just Google it. You know, yeah. I, there's yeah. every single it's either Google or YouTube, you'll find something, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, any of yeah. the other, you know, but you're right. I mean, it's, we have information out, you know, we don't have to like, well, which one is greater, which one is this, just look at no, it. That's right. That's, that's it. right. And, and I, I got to say, uh, younger people usually don't make that mistake. Younger people go straight to the internet, find the answer and they go, oh, okay. And they just share it. It's actually the older couples that will argue over things that the internet could answer. Right. But, uh, but the one about listening is one that we all have to be on to because 
uh, it's, it's, it's like the idea of boundaries, okay? Everything wants our time. We are all so busy, which means I don't have time for this. I don't have time to listen to you. Uh, and that, is, that then creates frustration rather than understanding. <laughs> uh, time, time with each other, time. You, you know, you know what, I, as you, you're saying this, you know, when you talked about the younger versus the older, I think there's one thing that also makes a difference in, in, in this whole concept yeah. is ego. Ego. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ego is a big deal. I mean, people sometimes they just don't want to say I am wrong. And that's a problem. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I think admitting that you're wrong sometimes is a macho thing. And it can, when I say macho, it's not a male thing or a female thing. It's just people have to be the winner. I got this. I'm it. You know, I got this. I know it all. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And, and let's not be sexist about this hurricane. Females have egos too. Right. Oh, that's exactly right. As long as the ego has got nothing to do with it. It's both sides have the ego and when they stand in that in in the world that you know it's like my way or the highway i got this you're wrong and then that's when the arguments and you're right that's it's right that's right but see we're all people right that means that we all battle our egos we all battle our pride we all have to learn to be just that much more humble and that is a difficulty for all of us it's, it's, it's got nothing to do with these stereotypical things. It's something that we're all going through, Hurricane, all of us. Well, Doc, I, I have a few other questions. <laughs> so let, let's go here. Um, this is the one I told you about the, uh, the New Year. So why do people around the New Year believe that they need actually a New Year resolution? <laughs> is oh, that, is, that, question, okay. is that a cultural thing? Is that a belief thing? Is that something that just kind of helps them reset because it's, it's a good feel? I mean, it's like a common theme and it ha happens every year, like, a, you know, clockworks. It just everybody's like, you know, I want a new life. Yet we have a new life every day. Yes. <laughs> Yes, we do. We do have a new life every day. And there, there is a cultural aspect to it, as you say, Hurricane, that, you know, we just come up with a new year, time to make some New Year's resolutions. But there's actually a deeper reason for that, because at the end of each year, we go through a cycle of spring, summer, autumn, winter. And when we come out of winter and we get that time of renewal and we get some joy and some energy for life and we're ready to get into it again, it's like... I want to get it right this time. So I'm, I'm going to get to the insights of two psychoanalysts because this is very important. The first one is Carl Gustav Jung. Uh, Carl Jung actually said it was, it's good for all of us to withdraw. Just, just get away from people just for a little bit, every day, every week, and every year, perhaps even for a day, just to say, how's it going? Because in that time, you can recalibrate because we can be pulled off course and sometimes we've got to be like a torpedo. A torpedo is going in the wrong direction all the time. And then it has a little inbuilt system that says, no, 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 so that you eventually go into the right direction. So to recalibrate and to put in a few New Year's resolutions is a way of saying, you know what, I'm drinking too much. I'm taking too many drugs, okay? I'm, I'm not keeping my promises. I'm, I'm not being as productive as I could. These are the kind of things that we know, we each know that we could do better at and we want to do better. That's the whole thing. That's the wonderful thing about us, Hurricane. We all want to do better. So to withdraw for a day every year just to say, how's it going? According to Carl Jung, is a pretty good idea. Now, you tend to have the attitude of, Every day is a new day. Let's just get out there and do it right. Mm -hmm. So to advocate for that, I'm going to go to psych uh, psychiatrist Viktor Frankl. And Viktor Frankl had this wonderful way of saying, look, live each day and make each decision as though you were going through your life the second time and you want to get it right this time. And I thought, wow, that's really powerful. With every decision you make, I want to get it right this time. Not like the last time where I made the wrong decision. No, I'm not going there. I want to get it right this time. So if you do that minute by minute, you can ask yourself, is this really what you want to do if you want to get it right this time? And if you can keep that attitude with you, according to Viktor Frankl, and he got a lot of people through some really difficult times, then you're reaching for this idea of, joy, happiness, and this sense of responsibility that we all need if we're going to get any joy in our lives. Well, 
I, I, <laughs> the, the concept that you just, you know, explained is, is as deep as it gets. Uh, and and I, I mean, we're talking obviously psychology here, so it's that's the deepest yeah, yeah. you can get. But but yeah. really, it's a, I actually use that concept personally. Yeah, yeah, by, that's, by, good. that's But good. where every day, you know, you just have to be better than yesterday, and you you can change things. Yeah, that's and right. There's no and no matter what, we can make a difference, and you know, in our lives and our people around us by changing to, for better. You know, yes. it doesn't have to be the same frequency. It doesn't have to be the same. You know, result. We can yes. find new ways. And it yeah. works. So, yeah. uh, so again, I, 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 yeah, go ahead. Sorry. And Hurricane, I want to show you how deep this goes, okay? Because Viktor Frankl was in a Nazi concentration camp. He was Jewish. And every night he would give a little lecture, basically telling his uh, fellow prisoners why they shouldn't commit suicide right? But that's how desperate it was, because every day somebody was committing suicide because too many people were dying, okay? And this is one of the things that he said, that, you know, sort of, is this the decision that you want to make if you want to get it right, okay? And then, of course, he gave reasons why people shouldn't commit suicide, and the three that he came up with was, number one was love, right? If you have somebody to share with, right, that makes all the difference, the second one was purpose. If you have something that you want to do in life, okay, get out there and do it. And then the third thing was finding meaning, even in suffering. And he, he said, look, you can't get worse than a Nazi concentration camp, but there could be some meaning here that even we don't realize. Look for the meaning. That's very challenging, Hurricane, very challenging. But he boiled it down to living life as though you're living it the second time and you want to get it right this time. Well, listen, I hope that folks are watching and listening right now. I mean, there's, there's some real juice here. There's some good stuff that people can take and, and maybe reflect back and, and eventually they can. I mean, everything that you're saying is sometimes it's available, but we just don't hear it enough. And yeah. you know, as we're highlighting it, people are like, damn, I can do this. I mean, yes, it's, it's anyone can do it. <laughs> There's no, okay. no one has limitation. <laughs> okay. Okay. But let's, uh, let's go really practical. Let's say somebody does have a new year's resolution uh -huh. and the usual new year's resolution is losing weight or giving up alcohol. And it's sort of like, I'll just have one more before I start. Okay. <laughs> and, and the thing is, it's very difficult to give up things like overeating or drinking alcohol. So uh, I'm going to talk just about those two, but you can apply this to anything that you feel that you are doing that you should not be doing. So firstly, by comfort eating or by drinking alcohol, that is serving a purpose in you. It is fulfilling a need. It is keeping some anxiety away from you, but you've got to find out what is it? What is it that drives me to have to do this? And then when you find out what it is, don't take your coping mechanism away until you find a better coping mechanism. So instead of just saying, I'm going to go on a, um, uh, on a total uh, weight binge, you know, I'm not going to eat anymore, that's going to fail unless you find something else that is going to solve your problems for you, okay? And one of the ways of doing this is to want something really good, really badly. I want a better life, but I really want it. I'm going to work hard for it. And this is how I'm going to get it. And then you find your coping mechanisms to say, right, I can now do without alcohol, or at least I can do without getting uh, inebriated every Friday night. I can actually cut it down to here because I now like the idea of keeping my memory intact 24 seven, seven days a week. Because a lot of people do not want their memory intact for that long. So you've got to find another way. And often, particularly in alcohol, it is finding a therapist to talk things through to because the therapist starts doing the things that the alcohol used to do. Makes you feel okay that things will be, that you're going to survive and they will help you put in a plan for the next day. So anybody who puts in a New Year's resolution, that's a difficult one. Find out what it's doing for you find a separate coping mechanism, then want a better life really badly to actually get there. It's hard work, hurricane, but it's worth it. Well, I mean, nothing is easy, right? Uh, everybody's got to, you know, you got to make some moves and you got to make it work and you yeah. got to commit to, again, talking about commitment, but this is a different one. It's for yourself. Yeah.
And again, we're still in the beginning of the year, so I think it's perfect. <laughs> so I wanted to actually make sure that, you know, we get this, this answer for folks. So, you know, you, you can do this and you will do it and you just have to follow those steps. And doctor, thank you for giving us some key. Oh, no, that, that's right. Plus when people put in New Year's resolutions, they will fail. We all fail. And when, let's say I'm working with somebody who wants to give up something like smoking, right? Uh, and they come to me and basically say, look, I've failed again. And I say, congratulations. And I say, what for? Well, each failure will bring you closer to your success. And then we ask, what did you learn from this failure? Well, I learned this didn't work. I know that's right. And this, and, and I need this. Okay, good. So let's work on that before we try again. Okay. But then there'll come the time when we'll try again. And you know what? It'll get to the stage where people succeed. Wonderful. Dr. Doctor, you, you brought up something that is powerful because I think the, the, the theme of failure and success comes, you know, very often to all of us and everybody is always debating about it. But you're yes. right. You know, your failure is a success because as long as you acknowledge and learn from it and, you know, see the value of it and it helps you reset and be better on the next round. And that's it. Yeah. Yes. So, so, so just the way you, you, you stated it, it just makes it very easy for folks to, to comprehend. And I'm really coming from you. I mean, that, that, that's powerful because you do this for treatment. You're helping people. And most of the people are shocked to your point. They're like, I failed. Yeah. No, you didn't. You actually learned. You actually get in one step closer. And that's exactly a big you know, difference in mindset and how you think about you know, the, the concept. Someone says, I failed. I'm dead. It's over. I give yes. up. Yes. And we don't want that. Yes. Yes. In fact, uh, this is why sometimes we go to uh, famous sports people because they have this mindset. And uh, one of the people who has failed most in this life is Roger Federer, the world's number one uh, tennis player. He has lost more grand slams than he's uh, won, far more, but he's ready to lose. And that's why he wins. Michael Jordan, the greatest um, basketball player, says the same things. I've, I've gotten so many baskets because I have missed so many beforehand. The only time you fail is when you don't play the game, when you don't get out there and do what you believe that you should be doing. If you should be playing tennis, play tennis. If you, if you should be a, um, a, a lawyer or a business person, then get out there and do it. If you are there to be a caregiver or a volunteer, get out there and do it. Uh, you can't fail if you're actually doing it. And Doc, I just want to add one thing to that. Don't listen to anyone that tells you otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 and the reason I say that, because that, that takes us to, to, I guess, the next question, which is about yeah. the influence of others. Because yes. I think sometimes we listen to people who yes. almost will, will enjoy seeing you fail or yes. who are not going to be, who will be envious of your success and so on and so forth. Yes. So they'll actually go to the concept that, you know, no, you can do this. You can't do this. They just make you feel so miserable about it that you literally give it up. Yes. Uh, so the question is, and do we have more time? Do we have, we have one, for one question? Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> All we right. Do. So, so what makes people get easily influenced by the, by the behavior of their entourage and circle of friends, whether good or bad, how does this process occur and can I possibly achieve a level of control and not fall captive to this trap? Jennifer. Ah, oh, Jennifer, such a good question. Such a good question because it brings us back to boundaries, right? And the thing is that we as human beings are by nature, by our very nature, social creatures. We want approval. In fact, we need approval from other people. If we are not accepted by other people, it feels like a death sentence to us. However, in all of us, that situation can be manipulated. It can be manipulated for other people to get out of you what they want rather than for your own good. And so we have to start to be discerning as to who is a real friend and who is somebody who just wants you around to make them feel better. So in psychology, we have this idea of an internal locus of control or an external locus of control. And it sounds a bit technical, but I'll, I'll, I'll explain. Let's say a group of friends are out and they decide that they're going to watch a movie. If you've got an external locus of control, you let other people make decisions for you. Let's say they want to go see this horrible film. Uh, it's, it's a horror story, a lot of blood and gore and supernatural things. And you're quite susceptible to nightmares. And you go, sure, that's fine with me. Let's go and see the movie. And then you end up with nightmares for two weeks. That's too much of an external locus of control. 
An internal locus of control is saying, I'll do what I want. Now, if you go to the movies and you always want to see the movie that you want, you never want to make any compromises for anybody else, you're going to see a lot of movies by yourself, right? So somewhere in between these two extremes, sometimes say yes to people, sometimes no, that is not good for me, right? So we're always looking for a higher good. Now, a higher good is how you are going to be in the future and how you are going to be with your friends in the future. Right. So if you can see yourself getting on better with your friends, enjoying life more, and it's good for you, go ahead, see the movie. But if you're going to be a, a nervous wreck for two weeks, don't see the movie. Say, guys, I just got to sit this one out. And somewhere in between there, we've got to make those decisions. And in our orbital frontal cortex, which is actually the very front of our brain. It's the part that goes ahead of us, but it guides us. It's where we make decisions. These days, I need to say that most of us are not making decisions for ourselves enough. And there's a good reason for that. None of us have as many friends as we used to 20 or 30 years ago. We have studies to show us that. So we make more compromises for friends. There's a limit to that. I would suggest that we have more friends that are good quality friends that actually want what's good for you. And if you have a friend that says, hey, if you're going to have nightmares for two weeks, I don't want you to see this movie. I'll go see something else with you. That's a friend, right? And that will deepen the relationship and you will feel better about them the next day and you will feel better yourself the next day. So sometimes you've got to do things for yourself, have an internal locus of control. Sometimes you've got to be flexible, go with the flow, do something with other people, right? And that's having an external locus of control. The ideal is to be able to do that all and to think, think with your orbitofrontal cortex, what do I want? What is best for me and my friends? So thank you for that question, Jennifer. It's a very important one. Well, thank you, Doc. And, and you know, it's, it's amazing because the idea of you kind of compromising here and being yeah. a little bit of a, uh, a, sp a good sport, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's a very powerful, you know, idea because most of the people sometimes to your point, they go one way or the other, but if you really want the right folks around you, you should also be able to give back and, and, and it's, it's a give and take. It's a two way street. It's not always about you and no more selfishness and none of that stuff. Yeah. And um, the other thing I was going to say just about this concept here is the, philosophy here of uh you set in those boundaries you know but yeah. you can also limit yourself yeah. if you go yeah. to one end you know versus the other yeah. you want to be yeah. in the middle a uh, yeah. good example if you go on a on, on a trip or you go with a group of people to anywhere you know sometimes yeah. that's a chaos because yeah. everybody wants to do everything <laughs> yeah that's right, <laughs> you know, that's right. I, I, and i've seen that happen where you know so i actually choose one very easy simple way you know if there's too many people and and, and decision makers i just stay out you know whatever i don't make a you know any suggestions unless they ask me <laughs> you know when i yeah. when i choose to be in a group then the group decides when i choose to be you know leading or whatever that's different i'll make a decision but yeah. but it makes life a lot easier that way because otherwise you clash and and you end up not doing anything and just like going multiple directions yeah. and that's pretty common yes it is it's very common it's very common in fact we so want to get on with people that people abdicate responsibility and decision making you can get a group of 10 people what movie should we see oh whatever you want oh i'm easy and everybody's easy and so all of a sudden there's no decision being made you know and then if somebody makes a decision everybody sort of goes i didn't want to see that no i hate that movie what the hell let him make that decision okay so these are dynamics and what i wanted to say about that is we sometimes think it it is all or nothing or left and right. And it's maybe because we've got a left and a right hand that we think that the answer is on or off. Okay. But often the answer is what Aristotle called a golden mean. You go for somewhere in between because both extremes, they tend to be wrong. Whereas somewhere in the middle, and we will all choose the middle differently and to be able to be flexible, just move from one to the other, depending on the situation that would actually be more ideal. But because we're human and we've all got different ideals, we'll all have different ideas as to where that golden mean actually is. 
Well, true, Doc, but but here's the thing, right? If you want to be in a group and you yeah. want to have a circle and you want to be enjoying, uh, you know, a family affair or or friends, you know, out in whatever, you have yeah. to be able to to be flexible with that. I mean, it's not yeah. just now you have more than one person that that's going to have an opinion. And so therefore you want to yeah. be able to be it's not it might work my way it may not. So you have to be prepared to the idea that it's not going to be always your way here <laughs> and right. it could be a different it's decision right. if you don't then you might, to your point earlier, may, maybe you're going to wind up, you know, not going with anyone. You'll be solo. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So uh, That's right. Yeah. Well, well, listen, Doc, I mean, we're coming to the end and I, I know your, your time is valuable. And uh, so I have a few more questions. So we'll, we'll resolve, we'll reserve them for the next one. <laughs> we'll do this again, Hurricane, and we'll get yeah. into more of the questions. Yes. Yes, sir. So any last, uh, you know, words or, you know, advice in this particular episode here? Well, okay, in this particular episode, we really talked about two main things. One was relationships and the other one was boundaries. And boundaries actually has to do with uh, New Year's resolutions as well. Because when you put in a New Year's resolution, you're putting in a boundary to yourself. You're saying, I don't want to do this anymore. But you've got to outsmart some of the wrong things that you do or some of the uh, bad habits that you want to get rid of, right? And yet in relationships... We've got the same thing. You can't go into a relationship saying, this is what I want, this is what I want, it's got to be my way. Because there's another person who's also saying, this is what I want, it's got to be my way. And so you will end up with no relationship if you can't be flexible. However, that doesn't mean that you give in to absolutely everything. And the answer that we found in that has to do with the social brain, the parts of your brain that have to do with empathy, compassion, feeling pain and making decisions and monitoring how you're getting on with other people that's very active in that and if we be true to ourselves then as shakespeare said it's difficult to be untrue to anybody else or false as shakespeare said well doctor thank you for the wisdom as always i know i enjoy every minute of of, of the good stuff that you've given us here and I hope that folks watching or listening on the show and that you will be replaying as well, uh, just to benefit from any and everything that we're giving them here. And so uh, thank you so much for your time, folks. Thank you for taking the time to watch and listening in. And uh, we'll be talking at the end of next month. So let's uh, stay tuned for the end of February and we'll have another session. And I do want folks to call us in. I mean, today I had a little yes. technical difficulty, but we want to have, you know, live interactions, uh, 732 yes. 332 eight four nine three that's our new number so just dial in and we'll have some fun and dr i will be ready to answer your questions Ciao and now. we'll be here hurricane and we miss uh, we wish you a wonderful new year okay <laughs> thank you thank you and you know what enjoy the summer <laughs> while it lasts <laughs> while it lasts that's exactly right. <laughs> all right doctor thank you so much <laughs> okay hurricane thank you take care right, take it easy bye-bye bye-bye